In this video, I'll show you how you can create random final quizzes that still satisfy all your learning objectives. Okay, let's get started here. So I'm going to build for you a final quiz that satisfies three different learning objectives but also is a very effective quiz in that I'll make sure that every time a user takes that quiz, they'll see the same number of multiple choice questions and the same number of true and false questions. So what I've done is uh, to start this off, I've actually created a series of gift format files. Gift format is just a way that uh, users can create all their questions in advance before even using Adobe Captivate. I have a separate video on creating gift uh, questions or gift files, and I'll point to that right here. So you can check that out. But essentially, you just write out your quiz question in something as simple as Notepad or some other type of text editor, as long as it's capable of saving in UTF-8 encoding. Uh, you'll be fine. So once I've got all of my gift files, uh, I've got them set up for all my multiple choice, for the geography, the history, the politics. So I have three different learning objectives, one of which deals with geography, history, and politics. And I have my multiple choice questions and my true false questions put into two separate files. So I end up with six different gift format files. You know, again, check out that other video if you want to see how to create your own gift format, but you could create these manually as well. So here's my course. It's not much right now. It's just a basic slide and a quiz results slide that I've customized. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that my, my question pool manager is open. And to do that, you want to uh, actually hit the window drop down menu and select question pool and from there you're going to see this tiny little button with three dots in it and this is almost a hidden feature it's so small and this is in adobe captivate 9 but you could find this in adobe captivate captivate 8 and you could probably find it in 7 too i don't recall but um it's very simple you just simply click on that and you can now manage all of your question pools Question pools are simply a place where your questions can reside but stay grouped together as a set of a particular uh, set of questions. So uh, you can use this to organize both the types of questions that you've created, but also to keep them organized according to learning objectives as well. So I'm going to rename this first default pool here. We're going to call it geography since that's the, the first learning objective and we'll say multiple choice uh, or MC for short and I'm going to do geography underscore true false I spelled geography wrong but that's okay same thing for the history learning objective we're going to do history underscore multiple choice and then history underscore true false Two more to go, politics, underscore, multiple choice, and politics, underscore, true, false. So you've got all our possible types of questions. I think there's about 20 or so questions in all of these pools. In the end, I'm going to display about 10 questions to the learners. Uh, so we want to randomly select from these pools. But let's first import our gift file formats. Uh, format files and we'll just do that by navigating to where I have those stored and that is right here so geography multiple choice this just takes a few moments of your time you can see it's created them all here and they're actually right down here as well true false let's import those history uh, multiple choice you see once you've uh, created this it's very straightforward to do this what am I doing now history true false 
So I have a couple questions there. Politics, multiple choice. And the gift format will also support other types of questions. Uh, for example, matching questions could be imported this way as well. And true, false here. Politics, true, false. So I have all my questions imported in. And now there's certain things that you may wish to do to these questions uh, just for formatting sake and things like that. Let's take a look here. So here's our geography question. Uh, we have a bunch of questions here. They're all multiple choice. One of the things I like to do is turn on shuffle answers. This way, every time a user sees one of these questions, you can see that I've actually made the first answer in, in these cases with the exception of the one uh, multiple answer question. The first answer is always the right answer. So I'm going to definitely want to shuffle those and, and give them a random quality within the question itself. Same thing here. I'm going to select all these questions and choose shuffle answers. And same thing for the multiple choice. I don't need to shuffle the answers for true, false. Traditionally, true and false are always shown in that order. I guess you could if you really wanted to, but it might confuse some of your learners. So, so I've got that set up. The final thing I need to do is actually create the placeholders and determine how many of each question pool I'm going to display to the end user. So in this case here, we're going to go to the quiz drop-down menu and select question slide. Alternatively, you can hit shift control Q and that will bring you up the insert questions window. You could select random question. And for the first group, then you can see how the random questions are linked to one of those six question pools. We'll start with the first one, uh, geography multiple choice. We'll choose, uh, there's six questions in that particular uh, question pool, but we'll show three to start off with here. Uh, so it will randomly select three of those. Uh, we'll also add that true false, one of the true false questions from the geography learning objective. And we'll continue to add these uh, in the appropriate numbers for each of these uh, different question pools there. So uh, we'll add another true false to history true false there. And we'll do two of the politics multiple choice. And then lastly, we will do one from politics true false. So we end up with, and these are not in any particular order, but you'll end up with, of course, uh, 10 different questions uh, associated with the different, and you can see right on the preview uh, of the screen, this one's linked to the history multiple choice, this one's history true false, politics, multiple choice. And you can even further jumble this up by sliding and dragging the different uh, placeholders on your film strip as well, if you wish. Now, the one thing I like to do with any quiz that I create, especially uh, uh, random ones, is I select all my quiz questions and I change the action on success to go to next slide. The reason being is that the default slide length, I think, is about three seconds, and it will pause automatically one and a half seconds into that question. Once you've answered it, you'll have to wait a second and a half before it continues to the next slide. And me, I like things to be a little snappier, so when I hit click anywhere to continue, I want it to go straight to the next question. So that's what I'm doing in this case here. The other thing you can do, and this is uh, something to consider as well, if you're dealing with, for example, let's find a, uh, uh, let's see if we've got one of our true false questions here. Uh, most of the, the multiple choice questions in this quiz are worth 10 points each. True false, I think should probably not be worth as much. So I'm gonna assign them a value of five points each, just so that the true false, uh, don't have as much of an impact on the quiz as let's say the multiple choice do. 
So that's pretty much it. I think we have a, a truly effective final quiz here. Uh, let's just do a preview of this. I'm going to get rid of this first slide since we don't need it. But we'll just preview this project here and we'll see what that looks like. So the first question we get is a true-false politics question. Is it true that until 1982, Canada required approval of the uh, of, of the British to amend its constitution? That is, in fact, true. We'll hit submit. Oh, it's not true. 1982. Maybe I got the date wrong. Is it true that Canada takes up over 50% of North America's area? False. Correct and you know so on and so forth the advantage of setting up your quiz this way is that if i have to take this course a second time i will see an entirely different quiz but the good news is is that every single learning objective will be uh equally represented and also every single question type will be appropriately represented as well i won't get one user take the quiz and see 10 true false questions if you were to dump all of your questions into one single question pool, that's at least a possibility. Uh, whereas the next user might get nothing but much more complicated multiple choice questions. So this ensures that you have a truly effective quiz, that it's equitable across all the different users, that each learning objective is well represented, and each question type is well represented. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.